So today's video is about Frank. Kidding, it's not. We're gonna be talking about the angelfish tank as well as the discus tank, a few little updates between the two. So I figured let's just do them together because this is how they've always meant to be, discus versus angelfish. What? So a few things look like it might have changed with the discus aquarium. Uh, the color of the tank itself is different. There's a little few little uh, blue dots swimming around. But um, before we go, I just kind of want to mention that uh, today is Thursday. Uh, it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon right now. I've been really busy. This, tonight at 12 o'clock uh, midnight, I hop on a plane to go to London, United Kingdom, or London, England, uh, for the King of DIY meetup. If you're not aware of that, link is in the description below. Also, I kind of want to mention that my daughter Haley is getting back into aquariums. This time she's going with something a little special, something that she's been wanting for a while. So perhaps in next video, that's what we'll uh, set up and get started on, but I'm not sure. So there's a few things different with the discus aquarium. One, there's a lot of bright lights shining on the tank right now, so the discus aren't going to you know, be out as much. They need to put on some more size and uh, get more comfortable with the aquarium before they feel like swimming out and about as much as you might expect. However, things are starting to look a little bit more natural for a couple of reasons, and I've did this with both aquariums. I've left the lights on for extended periods of time, trying to age the tank and get it to look a little bit older uh, with algae. Uh, one of the things that bothers me when looking into an aquarium is the reflections on the side panels. However, if you allow algae to grow on that, it looks entirely natural, it's the cheapest do-it-yourself background that you can have. Uh, plus it's beneficial, it's going to remove nitrates, uh, add oxygen to the aquarium, and even sm some of the smaller fish will nibble at it and you know eat it, especially fry and whatnot, although I don't plan on doing any breeding. I let the uh, algae grow on the wood and the background, you guys will remember these are aqua decor backgrounds, as well as the substrate. Now, it does look a little bit bad right now, but this is going to be beneficial to me, especially when traveling and I'm not able to do a water change. At least the algae is going to be able to pick up, you know, some of the slack. The fish I added, I, I couldn't help it. I wanted to add in some cardinal tetras. I used to have about 100, 150 with discus a long time ago, like 12 years ago. And they are a classic addition to a discus tank, but you know, under the right conditions, these guys can look absolutely amazing. And in a dark tank where they feel comfortable, they're going to just glow blue. And it's absolutely stunning. Now, these guys are only tiny. They have a ways to go before they get a little bit bigger. But there's only about 30 or 40 in there. I forget how many I've gotten. But they serve a couple purposes. They add a little splash of color, a little bit more action in the tank, and also act as a dither fish, meaning that these guys are difficult to scatter around. They're not really a fish that's going to hide or anything like that. So they make the discus believe that everything's okay in the aquarium. All the little fish are fine. Nobody's scattering around. So they'll come out more often. And with smaller discus in a, in a room that's uh, brightly lit like this, with me filming constantly, it's difficult to get the discus always out until they are close to adulthood where they're going to be displayed constantly. I've also floated a few Anubias in the tank. I don't know what I'm doing with them. They came out of the 2,000 gallon aquarium and I thought I'll just throw them in here for now. It adds a little bit of cover. It doesn't look that good, but you know I don't mind them in there for now. It's not permanent. I'll figure out a, way, a place to put them. I might put them in the rainbow fish tank, which wouldn't look that great, but you know maybe I'll end up putting them. Um, I don't know where do you guys think I should put them. As for feeding this tank, these guys are really simple. The cardinals actually will just eat a flake food. They're such a tiny fish that I don't mind feeding flake food for them, uh, which is just an all-purpose flake. Whereas the discus, I'm going to be preparing their food and making it myself. However, I haven't had time over the past uh, several weeks just due to travel. Uh, so these guys have actually been getting frozen brine shrimp uh, and other different uh, types of frozen food, some of them having spirulina in it and whatnot, just trying to keep it varied and not getting them addicted to a certain type of food and absolutely staying away from blood worms. I know a lot of discus keepers that are new to discus will go to blood worms. It's entirely too difficult to get them off of it. Blood worms do not have uh, that much nutritional value to begin with. Plus, it's difficult for the fish to actually digest the, uh, the skin on the blood worm. So a lot of the times they'll get constipated. So 
It's a lot of the times it's just best to stay away from them. The only tiny worm I will feed discus is uh, California blackworms. They're a tiny little squiggly worm. Definitely beneficial, hugely nutritious, and entirely safe for the discus. Plus they're alive, so it's very difficult for them to refuse. Uh, whenever I'm conditioning discus to breed them, that's typically my go-to food to get them to uh, into spawning condition. However, it's not needed. The do-it-yourself food I find works entirely better. And once I make a few pounds of it, I'll probably make 10, 15 pounds of it. Uh, we'll probably make a video on it, although I've got three or four different videos on do-it-yourself foods. This entire tank will be on that food uh, and potentially others like the angelfish, which we should talk about now. So the angelfish tank is definitely one of my favorite aquariums in the aquarium gallery. I think the discus will definitely overtake that favoritism in this racking system once the discus grow, you know, five, six inches, you know, approaching adult size and put on that deep red coloration that I'm looking forward to. But for now, out of the two, it's these guys. I'd love to know which one's your favorite between the two. But when growing the algae out in a tank like this, it's extremely painful to watch and do because it's like your tank it just looks horrible. And you know, arguably it does look bad like this. However, I keep the front panel clean and I don't touch the sides, I don't touch the background and I haven't had to uh, vacuum the substrate even though there is a lot of debris there that's actually debris from the wood so it kind of looks good. As opposed to the discus tank where I actually let algae grow on the substrate, it, it, looks, uh, it gives it a different look, it changes the substrate around from the other ones and makes it look more unique. With that said, the contrast that these guys have, these platinum angels in such a dark tank, is absolutely mesmerizing, especially in person. The camera, of course, never picks up um, what the, everything truly looks like. And me being colorblind, I can't really do any color correction or I'll end up looking blue and I won't know it until it's too late. So I just put everything in auto and we just film. These guys eat a variety of foods, mostly uh, flakes as well as some very tiny growth pellets. The plants, of course, are growing, but they are covered in a little bit of algae. Again, I don't care. Now that um, I have a nice coating of algae everywhere, I can cut the light cycle back down and get into something normal. The algae will maintain, but it's not going to continue to get out of control. But again, just getting to that point, it can be difficult just because your tanks will look horrible, but once you get an even coating on everything, I, I don't care. I think it looks great. But one of the things I'm starting to notice with these platinum angels, you guys know they are white, is that some of them have some blue iridescence to them. Uh, some of their, all of their scales, in fact, are extremely uh, iridescent. They're very shiny. Absolutely amazing. When anybody comes into the gallery, this is the tank they look at the most. Of course, the rays are always exciting and, and, and playing around with the rainbow fish and the 375 is also a lot of fun. But this is the tank most people think are the prettiest. Um, we still have the same number of angels. We haven't lost any fish. This tank gets a water change once a week. We do 50% water change once a week on this entire system. But ultimately, I don't think I'll be adding any more midwater fish. I think I might add some Corydora to the bottom. I will be getting into fancy plecos. So many people are saying, Joey, why don't you get some fancy plecos? I am. Uh, two problems. One, I can't buy every single fish that I want for every single tank all at once. Two, availability. You can, everything I want is not always available right when we need it. So, you know, patience is going to be key here and I can promise you that almost every one of these tanks will get a pleco of some sort and I do want them to be some of the fancier plecos. I won't be adding, you know, the common ones that get too big, uh, but some of the smaller species that are, you know, three to four or five inches are definitely going to be suitable for these tanks and we'll see what happens. I'd love to get your suggestion on what should go in each. And here, I'm thinking some zebra plecos. Again, let me know what you guys think. I need to know two things. One, what's your favorite setup out of these two? Two, what should we add for plecos? And finally, I guess three, what's your thought on all this algae? Of course, it doesn't look good to some, but again, I've got my reasons for growing it. So I wish I wasn't so pressed for time these past few weeks, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, outside of the videos that you see, I do manage a tremendous amount of other things. Uh, however, what I have been trying to do is get out more, uh, see you guys more, put on more events. And this uh, trip to the UK is entirely important to me just to connect to uh, hobbyists on the other side of the pond that have supported me for so long. With that said, there's a few more events that are going to be happening in North America. 
very shortly and I will keep you guys posted on those. For the most part, I'll be posting them on Facebook through my events and you guys can check them out there. I'll leave links in the description to both Facebook and Instagram while I'm in the UK. For those that don't come, I will probably take pictures and do videos and go live at some point uh, as well. But uh, I'll also be filming and I'll bring you guys those videos in the near future. Anyway, so that's just a short update of what I've got going on. Again, tremendously busy day ahead of me today, but uh, it's always nice for me to come out here and uh, enjoy the tanks, remember why it is what I do what I do, and even if I can only bring you guys a short update for the day, it's certainly worth doing so. But I gotta get running, so thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, and you like aquariums, then you might wanna consider subscribing so you don't miss any of these videos.